The Protoevangelion, or an historical account of the birth of Jesus Christ and the perpetual Virgin Mary, his mother, by James the Lesser, cousin and brother of whom they call the Lord Jesus, chief apostle and first bishop of the Christians in Jerusalem. And we have here an illustration of Elizabeth receiving the visit of Mary from a Greek diptychon of the 13th or 14th century. The Gospel is ascribed to James. The allusions to it in the ancient fathers are frequent. Well, just like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it turns out to be uh, ones from not the same generation. So, um, yeah, because the people writing the second century, they were, you know. Um, the allusions to it in the ancient fathers are frequent, and their expressions indicate that it obtained a very general credit in the Christian world. The controversies founded upon it chiefly relate to the age of Joseph at the birth of Christ and to his being a widower with children before his marriage with the virgin. It seems material to remark that the legends of the latter ages affirm the virginity of Joseph, notwithstanding Epiphanius, Hilary, Chrysostom, Chiral, Euthymius, Death Elect, Achaemenius, and indeed all the Latin fathers, till Ambrose and the Greek fathers afterwards, maintain the opinions of Joseph's age and family, founded upon their belief in the authentic, authentic, uh, the authenticity. The authenticity of this book. It is supposed to have been originally composed in Hebrew. By Hebrew, I'm sure they mean Aramaic. Uh, but um, Postellus brought the manuscript of this gospel from the Levant, translated it into Latin, and sent it to Aporimus, a printer at Basel, where Bibliander, a Protestant theologian, and professor of divinity at Zurich caused it to be printed in 1552. Postulus asserts that it was publicly read as canonical in the Eastern churches, they making no doubt that James was the author of it. It is nevertheless considered apocryphal by some of the most learned divines in the Protestant and Catholic churches. Now, apocryphal is not the same thing as, you know, Excluded, or something. Chapter 1. 1. Joachim was a rich man. 2. Offers to the Lord. By Lord meaning God is a noun and verb, so Yahweh, not Jesus. 3. Is opposed by Reuben, the high priest, because he has not begotten issue in Israel. 6. Retires into the wilderness and fasts 40 days and 40 nights. In the history of the 12 tribes in Ju Israel, we read... There was a certain person called Joachim, who, being very rich, made double offerings to the Lord God, having made this resolution, any substance shall be the be for the benefit of the whole people, and that I may find mercy from the Lord God for forgiveness of my sins. Yahweh Alhim, is, is, is that the term he would have used? Um, so he's giving double tithes, double animal sacrifices, that, that sort of thing. Um, but at a certain great feast of the Lord, when the children of Israel offered their gifts, and Joachim also offered his, Reuben, the high priest, opposed him, saying, It is not lawful for thee to offer thy gifts, seeing thou hast not got any issue in Israel. That would be a stupid role if there was such a thing. Um, at this, 
Joachim, being concerned very much, went away to consult the registries of the twelve tribes to see whether he was the only person who had not begot any issue. But upon his inquiry he found that all the righteous had raised up seed in Israel. Really, he was the first to have a fertility issue, or his wife was the first to have a fertility issue. But upon inquiry, he found... Then he called to mind the patriarch Abraham, how that God, in the end of his life, had given him his son Isaac, upon which he was exceedingly distressed, and would not be seen by his wife, but retired into the wilderness and fixed his tent thereof, and fasted forty days and forty nights, saying to himself, I will not go down, either to eat or drink, to the Lord my God shall look down upon me, but prayer shall be my meat and drink. And Exodus 24, 11, 34, 28, Deuteronomy 9, 9, 1 Kings 19, 8, Matthew 4, 2, Genesis 21, 2 are passages that kind of remind you of that in a bit. Um, but fasting days doesn't mean he did uh, you know, a, a lot of Christians don't understand this, is the fasting of the days. Well, that didn't include the nights, so they would break their fast at night. Chapter 2. Anna the wife of Joachim mourns her barrenness. Six is reproached with it by Judith, her maid. Nine sits under laurel tree and prays to the Lord. In the meantime, his wife, Anna, was distressed and perplexed by a double account and said, I will mourn both for my widowhood and my barrenness. Then drew near a great feast of the Lord, and Judith, her maid, said, How long will you thus afflict your soul? The feast of the Lord is now come, when it is unlawful for anyone to mourn. Take therefore this hood, which was given by one who makes such things, for it is not fit that I, who am a servant, should wear it. But it well suits a person of your greater character. But Anna replied, Depart from me. I am not used to such things. Besides, the Lord hath greatly humbled me. I fear some ill-designing person hath given thee this, and thou art come to pollute me with my sin. Then Judith, her maid, answered, What evil shall I wish you, when you will not hearken to me? I cannot wish you a greater curse than you are under, that which God hath shut up your womb, that you should not be a mother in Israel. At this, Anna was exceedingly troubled, and having on her wedding garment, went about three o'clock in the afternoon to walk in her garden. And she sat, and she saw a laurel tree, and sat under it, and prayed unto the Lord, saying, Is that laurel the prophecy tree? Prayed unto the Lord, saying, O oh God of my fathers, bless me and regard my prayer as thou didst bless the womb of Sarah and gavest her a son Isaac. Chapter 3 Anna, perceiving a sparrow's nest in the laurels, bemoans her barrenness. And as she was looking toward heaven, she perceived a sparrow's nest in the laurel. And mourning within herself, she said, Woe is me! Who begot, who begat me, and what womb did bear me, that I should be thus accursed before the children of Israel, and that they should reproach and deride me in the temple of my God? Woe is me! To what can I be compared? I am not comparable to the very beasts of the earth, for even the beasts of the earth are fruitful before thee, O Lord. Woe is me! To what can I be compared? I am not comparable to the brute animals, for even the brute animals are fruitful before thee. O Lord, woe is me, to what am I compared? I cannot be compared to these waters, for even the waters are fruitful before thee, O Lord. Woe is me, to what can I be prepared, uh, compared? 
I am not comparable to the waves of the sea for these, whether they are calm or in motion, with the fishes which are in them, pray see, O Lord. Woe is me, to what can I be compared? I am not comparable to the very earth, for the earth produces its fruits and praises thee. O Lord, chapter 4. An angel appears to Anna to tell her that she shall conceive. Two angels appear unto her in the same errand. That would be one. Five, Job comes sacrifices. Eight, Anna goes to meet them. Nine, rejoicing, she shall conceive. Then the angel of the Lord stood by her and said, Anna, Anna, the Lord hath heard thy prayer. Thou shalt conceive and bring forth, and thy progeny shall be spoken of in all the world. <laughs>